Today we are going to be talking about poisoning in the early church, specifically that of Joseph Smith, his brother Samuel Smith, and Brigham Young. Dun, dun, dun. Zelf. On the shelf. So first is the alleged poisoning of Joseph Smith by his wife, Emma. Poisoning. So it's funny because the, the church tends to paint Joseph Smith and Emma's relationship as this beautiful love affair without ever mentioning any of the other 35 <laughs> wives that he had during his time as a uh, prophet of the church or whatever. But you know, things weren't always so hunky-dory. Joseph hey, Smith not? in section 132 gave a commandment to Emma saying that she would be destroyed if, he, if she didn't obey him and that sort of thing. Also in 132, God was like, listen, if you take another wife, you need to do it with Emma's permission. And Joseph a lot of the time was like, nah. And then it's like, and if you don't, well, it's too bad. You can't assume <laughs> blanket consent for polygamy. <laughs> So this one is from, uh, we're going to read an excerpt from Richard Bushman, who's the author of Rough Stone Rolling, a biography about Joseph Smith, a faithful biography. Sam, do you want to start us off here? Yes, I do. Through the late fall and winter of 1843 and 1844, Joseph and Emma's relationship broke down only once. During Sunday dinner on November 5th, Joseph became ill, rushed to the door, and vomited so violently that he dislocated his jaw. Damn, that would really hurt. I think he dislocated his jaw a few times. He's a clencher. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Every symptom of poison, Willard Richards noted in Joseph's diary. Imagine having someone else write your diary. That night at the prayer meeting, Richards wrote in code that Joseph and Emma did not dress in the usual special clothing, <laughs> a sign that they were too much at odds to participate. Imagine someone else writing your diary in code. Uh, the next day, Richards wrote that... Who's Richards? Willard Richards. Was he alive at Joseph's time? Yeah. He was in charge of writing Joseph's diary. Mm -hmm. He just has to have a scribe, no matter what. He just, like, <laughs> cannot put pen to paper. <laughs> um, the next day, Richards wrote that Joseph was busy with domestic concerns. Years later, in the anti-Emma atmosphere of Utah, Brigham <laughs> Young spoke of a meeting where Joseph accused his wife of slipping poison into his coffee. Okay. Ding, 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 his into coffee. his coffee. Tana, it wasn't a commandment then, it was just a suggestion from the Lord. Or maybe this is exactly why we have the word of wisdom to be a commandment. You can't have your coffee poisoned if you don't drink coffee. Was this before or after word of wisdom came out? This was in 44. I don't so, know. I don't remember okay. the year. I think he died in 45, right? So it couldn't have been. Okay. Brigham interpreted Emma's refusal to answer as an admission of guilt. It's like every... Um, sitcom or movie plot. It's like if yeah. someone's just like weirdly silent and you're like, they're guilty. <laughs> Though there probably was an argument, the poisoning accusation was unfounded. Oh, P.S. I, I snagged this from Fair Mormon and they never mentioned that. They're like, Joseph Smith casually accused his wife of poisoning him in front of a, a temple meeting of leaders of the church, but it was like totally unfounded. Whoops. <laughs> Joseph was susceptible to vomiting anyway. He had even dislocated his jaw while vomiting once before. And five weeks after the 1843 dinner episode, he was sick again. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> Just like a bulimic. But vomiting more violently than ever. During this last bout, Joseph said great gratefully, my wife waited on me. So sometimes she's poisoning him, sometimes she's helping him. You never power. really know which is which, and mm -hmm. that was what was so tough in they the They like to play all sides. Yeah, it kept the romance alive, though. Here's sort of that same account from Brigham Young's perspective. He uh, talked about this. Did he have write his own diary? Uh, no, this one he just was talking about in the okay. semi-annual conference. <laughs> got it, got it. So quite an official, this is quite an official statement. Yeah, yeah. Okay. To my certain knowledge, Emma Smith is one of the damnedest liars I know of on this earth. Wow! <laughs> to my certain knowledge. And that's coming from a prophet speaking at a general conference. Yeah, he also once said of Emma, he said, Joseph Smith said he would go to hell and back yep, for Emma, yep, yep. and he surely must yep. go because that's where she is. Yeah, yeah, Something yeah. To that effect. <laughs> then he says, yet there is no good thing I would refuse to do for her if she would only be a righteous woman, but she will continue in her wickedness. Not six months before the death of Joseph, he called his wife Emma into a secret council, and there he told her the truth and called upon her to deny it if she could. He told her that the judgments of God would come upon her forthwith if she did not repent. He told her of the time she undertook to poison him, and he told her that she was a child of hell. Joseph said that to Emma. Yeah, God. and according to Brigham, and literally the most wicked woman on this earth, and that there was not one more wicked than she. He told her where she got the poison, how she put it in a cup of coffee, 
said he, you got that poison from so and so and I drank it but you could not kill me. When it entered his stomach he went to the floor and threw it off. He spoke to her in that council in a very severe manner and she never once said a word in reply. I have witnesses of the scene all around who can testify that I am now telling the truth. Twice she undertook to kill him. Okay, while there's a lot of humor we could potentially find in this, this is an abusive husband. Like, this is an account of abusive husband. Because he's obviously, like, getting paranoid because he's gained more, you know, power at mm -hmm. this point. And he's now, like, taking that paranoia out on Emma, which is, like, classic abusive husband because they'll like accuse you of like insane things mm. it just makes me really upset and like telling her she's a child of hell like that's total abuse no god would like give not that a loving god would like give a prophet those powers and then like allow them to like that's just the shittiest thing ever to do to like abuse your prophetic powers or whatever mm -hmm. and like say you're a child of hell okay so continuing with Brigham in Joseph's day she Emma tried to throw me brother Heber brother Willard Richards and the 12 apostles out of the church and tried to destroy the whole church and I know it Brigham loves saying like, I know it I know it sounds like Donald Trump a little bit don't you think yeah it is well that's like a, I have proof there's lots of people there who can <laughs> yeah that's like a classic I don't know what like a thing of narcissism or like some like common trait that's among all those types of people is just overstating everything and just acting like it's true mm. and just lying so blatantly that nobody would think you would lie that blatantly if that makes sense um joseph himself testified before high heaven more than once that she had administered poison to him there are men and women present today who can bear witness that more hell was never wrapped up in any human being than there is in her god he this is again it's just like bitter childish men abusing their power and like uh. making statements like this she gave him too heavy a dose and he vomited it up and was saved by faith this is ridiculous well, it, it, it's so ridiculous because if that's like the church it just shows how like how subject mormon history is to like the whims yeah. of the leaders of a yeah. time because at this time it's like emma smith evil person yeah. prophet of the church is specifically calling her the most evil yeah. person and on earth they just came out with a movie called jane and emma yeah she was like the hillary clinton of her time <laughs> so that's essentially wraps up the poisoning episode of joseph smith okay was he poisoned by emma we may never know of course, poisoning wasn't altogether uncommon, and Joseph Smith wasn't the only one in his family to uh, potentially be poisoned. The other one was Samuel Smith, who mysteriously died about a month after Joseph and Hiram were killed. Before we get on to him, just a little um, thing I want to explore is why would Emma want to poison Joseph? Like, assuming that that was true. Just to probably get back at him. Because so like, <laughs> is... she knows he's running around with people, making her uh -huh. feel like an idiot, mm -hmm. and um, being so obviously like controlling mm -hmm. and manipulative about it. It seems considerably more likely, given what we know about cult leaders and their typical psychological profiles and how they sort of change over time as they get more and more power, it seems a lot more likely that Joseph was just being paranoid. Yeah. And of course he saw her as like um, an enemy to him, like, a si like I think Donald Trump hates Melania. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's no love there. Yeah. Because you just, and even the more power becomes, first wife. yeah, <laughs> your power just becomes more whatever. And I'm sure she tried to like keep him in check in certain ways and he was just like, be gone woman. It's also just so self-absorbed because you're saying she's the most evil person ever, but the only example we really have of her being bad is like deny, you know, <laughs> trying to hurt this one leader of one church. And it's like, there are people committing mass genocide, <laughs> like running child prostitution rings. And you think that Emma Smith, Massacring. even if she did, even if she did try and poison Joseph, you think that she's the most evil person ever. Like that's God's priorities, is it? <laughs> okay. So Samuel Smith, also poisoned. So after he died mysteriously, uh, or he just fell ill, William Smith, his brother, uh, accused Brigham and Willard Richards of orchestrating Samuel's murder. Did we mention that all of this was taken from uh, exmormon.org, written by Steve Benson, who is grandson of Ezra Taft Benson? Let's see. Okay, so Sam William Smith is accusing Brigham Young and Willard Richards of orchestrating Samuel's murder. I have good reason for believing that my brother Samuel H. Smith died of poisoning at Nauvoo, administered by order of Brigham Young and Willard Richards only a few weeks subsequent to the unlawful murder of my older brothers Joseph and Hiram Smith while incarcerated in Carthage Jail. 
several other persons who were presumed to stand between Brigham Young and the accomplishment of his ambitions and wicked designs mysteriously disappeared from Nauvoo about the same time and, we have, and have never been heard from since. He's the one who left Nauvoo fearing that he would, he too would be killed. Who was Samuel Smith? Samuel Smith is Joseph's brother. So oh, he's, Joseph. he's next in line to become president of the church after Hiram and Joseph died. I was gonna say, why would someone kill him? Because like, it all seems to be within the church, but of course Brigham Young wanted to be in power. Because mm -hmm. again, well yeah, it's kind of like the Smith family versus uh, Brigham, Willard Richards, and that whole We group. need to do a whole video on the fight for power after Joseph died. Because oh, a lot of Mormons think that Brigham just kind of like... Yeah, oh, just like today, like, okay, yeah, new president. Up he went. Um, <laughs> but that's not how it happened at all. So, William Smith writing about the poisoning of Samuel Smith, they accused Hosea Stout. Samuel's wife believed this to be the case, naming as her husband's murderer the chief of police, Hosea Stout, a Danite, widely known for having a violent streak and a cold-hearted disposition. We also need to do a video on Danites. Yeah. There is so much. <laughs> I can't believe women don't know like about the violence and how like bloody it was back then. Yeah, so the Danites are a, a group of people called, they're like the destroying angels who would target and take out anyone who was disagreeing with the prophet and everyone knew he was more capable of homicide he had already been and would continue to be connected with several murders and assaults involving apostates and church critics uh, in the case of samuel smith stout had acted as samuel's caregiver when he fell ill and in that capacity had given samuel white powder medicine daily until his death samuel's wife daughter and brother all believed the powder to be poisoned oh years later hosea stout got tried by the Salt Lake Municipal High Court for attempted murder, and he said that it has been my duty to hunt out the rotten spots in the kingdom. He added that he had tried not to handle a man's case until it was right. He was one of those ethical murderers. Totally. We got a motive, a person, and he was like totally witnessed administering white powder. Yeah, it's pretty damning. <laughs> okay, and so then our last poisoning example. I love that this whole episode is just about poisoning. <laughs> yeah, and there's, I'm sure there's many more. This one is a, a case of perhaps the chickens coming home to roost. <laughs> it is quite possible that Brigham Young died himself by arsenic poisoning. Okay, so this is Stephen, Steve Benson again uh, is writing this whole thing, but he okay. took so much of his information from an article written by President John, w John Taylor's grandson, Samuel Taylor, so he starts out um, with a, an excerpt from the Deseret News, which describes the last events leading up to Brigham Young's death. And in that, the Deseret News said that he fell victim to cholera morbus, which was blamed on him having eaten a combination of green corn and peaches. So if any of y'all are cooking up a bowl of green corn and peaches, hold off. You could die of arsenic poisoning. <laughs> said that Brigham Young died because he ate green corn and peaches. Uh, that he died of cholera yeah. more, that was attributed Contracted to that. from green corn. Number one, are those sources of cholera normally? <laughs> but, and also, wouldn't there have been kind of like a cholera outbreak if that had happened? Like, anyway. Well, so, and then, so then, five years later, the physician who oversaw jo uh, Brigham Young's death went back and changed the record to say that it had been appendicitis. Ooh. which is interesting. Oh, and here's just a couple notes about like the Apostle John A. Widstow saying that it's well known in his, cause his wife was a young, and it's well known among their family that Brigham Young died, died of poisoning. poisoning. And a physician requesting anonymity and whose grandfather had attended Young in his final hours admitted to him that it was well known in his own family that Brigham died of poison. So this is the Deseret News' account of the progression of Brigham's illness. Okay, President Young's sickness commenced on August 23rd, continuing the whole of the afternoon. He had an inclination to vomit. Why does everyone in, in church history have an inclination to vomit? Because of the arsenic poisoning. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, why is everyone so vomity? But he continued to attend his business as usual. Oh, nice. I mean, his wives. <laughs> yeah. At 11 o'clock at night, on retiring, he was seized with an attack of cholera morbus. The usual symptoms of vomiting and purging being almost continuous until 5 o'clock on Friday morning, when at his own request, a mild opiate was administered hypodermically into each foot 
to relieve the intense pain caused by the constant cramping of the muscle. The first instant they kicked off Utah's, Utah's opioid crisis. Brigham Young <laughs> getting opioids injected into Aww, his feet. They've come so far. <laughs> Inflammation of the bowels set in on Saturday at 3 p.m. and the abdomen commenced to swell. One small dose, half a grain of opium, was administered and at midnight the same quantity. These doses, though small and given at long intervals, had a tendency to somewhat relieve the pain and retching, so susceptible was his system to any kind of narcotic or stimulant. Throughout Sunday, he continued, both while awake and asleep, to moan. During the same night, his sufferings were less severe, but continuous, although at 8 o'clock he had a grain of opium, and at midnight, half a grain. They're really plugging the opium. They are! <laughs> opium helps with pain. <laughs> this also sounds like a really miserable way to die. Yeah, yeah, terrible. On Monday morning at 8 o'clock, he showed increasing symptoms of nervous prostration by constant moving of the hands and twitching of the muscles of the arms. One grain of opium was administered, and from then till 12, he had a very severe spell. Another grain of opium was given him, and at 8... Tw this is literally just an account of all the opium he had. And at 8.20 <laughs> in the evening, half a grain more. About nine o'clock, he sank into a quiet sleep, resting without month so without moaning. I went and was looking up the symptoms of arsenic poisoning, and that's actually a huge one—a twitching of the, really? the hands and the, ex the or you know just the extremities. So when it talks about him getting injections in the feet to ease the pain, like that's not associated with appendicitis. Okay, when you said that arsenic, is with arsenic. During Sunday and Monday, he had received at intervals of half an hour a tablespoon of milk and brandy. Another word of wisdom. Maybe problem. all these prophets wouldn't be dead if they weren't drinking. Yeah, pff, drinking brandy, taking opium. About 10 on Monday evening, he sank into a semi-comatose condition from which it was difficult to arouse him. Although by persuasion, he swallowed the milk mixture every half hour. I love how God didn't step in to be like, hey, the milk's doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I know that's an obvious point, but it's just like everything about all of these stories are just like completely um, relevant to the time, if that mm. makes sense. Like yeah, yeah. you're having like dumb medicine, you, you know, yeah. Just all of it. It's just all so immature and like Brigham Young at the height of his maturity was like us as five-year-olds probably. Yeah, the church is never ahead of the times never. In, any, in, in any important way. It's no. always the same or usually behind. Yeah. This condition remained until about eight in the evening when partial prostration again ensued and his case considered exceedingly critical by the attending physicians. After consultation, an entire filling up of the lower part of the bowels by injection was determined upon for the purpose of creating an action through the alimentary canal, but was not persevered in on account of fainting symptoms and the patient objecting to the treatment, <laughs> which caused him to cry out with pain. He passed the night in a semi-comatose state. God, this sounds so miserable. I, you know, this also, is kind of boring, like medically heavy and yeah. kind of boring, but it does paint a picture that the SOB got what he had. It does, <laughs> he... which is nice, yeah, <laughs> honestly. Um, also, I don't, I'm not clued, that clued in on medicine these days, but do you think it was like just total nonsense that they were gonna fill up the lower part of his bowels and like they thought that would somehow help? Like, I don't no. really know how no, cholera no, works, but I heard you should drink Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> on Wednesday morning, symptoms of approaching disillusion were plainly evident. The early coma was entirely attributable, so the doctors say, to a poisoning of the blood from the pressure of the swelled bowels causing a prevention of return currents of the circulation to the heart and lungs. At the time of his demise, he was entirely free from the influence of any opiates or narcotics, having not taken any for 44 hours previous. Okay, so that's uh, that's where I stopped the uh, Deseret News okay. coverage of the death. Whew! Brutal stuff. Uh, yeah. Okay, so Samuel W. Young, or excuse me, Samuel W. Taylor, that grandson of President John Taylor, the article's called Who Done It? The Nagging Mystery of Brigham Young's Last Moments. Uh, he asserts in the article that the bedside doctors knew that Brigham Young had been poisoned and only gave him opiates because they didn't really know what else to do. It's just kind of like, well, we can ease his pain until okay. he, okay. he dies. They were, they thought it was pretty obvious. But why did they talk about like filling up the bowel? Just trying anything they could. He also, um, Desert News also talks about how it wasn't just the physicians who were there, but like y y physicians all around Utah were clamoring to be able to help. So I okay. think they were like just kind of trying to do whatever okay. they could think of. And they truly did not have good medicine back then. Yeah. So then this guy, Samuel Taylor, 
he goes and he consults with all these physicians talking about, you know, what happened, having them read the report mm -hmm. and compare it with what we now know about cholera, appendicitis, and arsenic poisoning. And it's pretty interesting. So Dr. Max Dimmick, well-known Sacramento physician who served as assistant clinical professor of obstetrics, obstetrics, obstetrics? and gynecology at the University of California Medical School. He said, what you, oh, what you would like to know is who had access to his lunch today. It must have been arsenic and it had to be acute rather than chronic poisoning. He discussed the possibility of typhoid, paratyphoid, or bacillary dysentery, dismissing them because in such cases, Brigham Young should have been ill over a prolonged period of time. As for cholera, he said, forget it. Forget it. Uh, Taylor notes Dimmick's confirming diagnosis that Young's death was not due to appendicitis. He said, I have seen innumerable, ca innumerable cases of appendicitis, including the complications of rupture, peritonitis, and abscess formation. I have never seen it present itself with symptoms such as those described for Brigham Young. Diarrhea is rare, and continual vomiting and purging are not described as symptoms of appendicitis. When I had appendicitis, I only threw up couple times I think. Oh, very nice. And it was really more of like a comfort thing. It was like, I just like feel mm -hmm. like I need to get something moving because it just was so gross. In summary, one can say Brigham Young did not die of appendicitis. That he had a massive generalized gastroenteritis is evident and is compatible with acute arsenic poisoning. New guy, Joseph H. Master, MD, forensic pathologist at the Diagnostic Pathology Medical Group of Sacramento states, I find nothing in the Deseret News article description of President Young's terminal illness that would be inconsistent with death by arsenic poisoning. So then we just have a bunch, we have, there's numerous more quotes of doctors being like, yeah, this is arsenic poisoning, that's not appendicitis. Yeah, I don't, I don't have think to read, we all, need all, to read them. all of them. Yeah, there's a lot of people saying from the available material, appears that he died of ingesting arsenic. Oh, this is interesting. Um, you mentioned that the doctor, whoever it was that signed his death, changed the cause from cholera to appendicitis. To appendicitis. Um, so who's this quote from? Um, I believe that this one again is from Samuel Taylor. Okay, this quote says, It could be significant that Seymour Young not only had second thoughts about Brigham's death years later, after appendicitis had been discovered, but that Dr. Young dug back into his journals to 24th of August 1877, five days before Brigham's death, and penciled in the addendum, appendix broke. Five days before Brigham's death and wrote in appendix broke. Yeah. This suggests that his, the journal wasn't a repository for private and personal matters, but was considered a historical record being written for posterity. Classic. Which makes sense, because otherwise you just write your own journal. And they're you? not even for posterity. Did you know when you become a general authority yeah. of a specific type, you hand over your yeah. rights to your journals? Like, your, the kids Legalist, don't get them when you yeah. die, it's like the church takes them. So then, later, Steve Benson sort of speculates on motives and things, and again, it's, it seems like it could be one of his wives. I think so, because it has to be someone who's, like, mm -hmm. at that time, the Beehive House or wherever Brigham Young was staying was, like, this an armed compound. It wasn't like Gosh. anyone could just get yeah, in. Yeah. It had to be someone who could administer it in a way that wouldn't be detected, so mm -hmm. someone either preparing his food or administering medicine, mm -hmm. and... Although it is possible that someone did it through the wife, you know yeah. what I mean? Because, like, the wife had to get the poisoning, and so who knows, like, who, what could have been going on. And while you're keeping him busy... I'll slip it in his drink. Wouldn't it be easier just to punch him in the mouth? I just imagine him like uh, King Joffrey in mm. uh, what's that show called? <laughs> Game of Thrones. Mm. Yeah, I mean he was a tyrant, so mm. any one of his wives had every reason to do that. So a really painful death, and if it's true that he had had uh, Samuel Smith poisoned to death, then this is a fitting. It's a real come up end. He and tasted his own medicine and it was bitter. A very bitter and, well, I think arsenic is. It is odorless, tasteless, dissolves instantly in liquid. So yeah. Um, moral of the story, don't drink coffee. Someone could slip arsenic right into it. Another moral... Never get involved in a land war in Asia. Another moral, don't be a psychotic religious leader trying to seize power and women just yeah, don't uh, get involved in cults it, yeah. there's oh, too much poisoning happens too in cults. much poisoning you don't want to get wrapped up in cults that. really are all about poisoning aren't they yeah and other things i mean castration yeah, yeah they're about a lot of throat slitting stuff. and you just don't hear about poisoning a ton in life 
Let us know in the comments if you've ever poisoned someone, if you ever think you've been poisoned, <laughs> and we're gonna leave our Patreon link down below if you wanna support us to help us make more of these videos and have our faces lit up in future ones. Um, what else? Uh -huh. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And if you have any good stories from the culty underbelly of Mormonism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send them our way. And we hope you enjoy this series. We have seriously endless history we can cover in future episodes. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up so we know to keep making more. Bye, thanks for Bye. watching. Bye, love you guys.